that actuates some relays that uh, turn on the appropriate lights. There's about 10 of those. The bus is a 1955 Greyhound that was put in service out here in the West Coast. And uh, this is a low voltage control system for uh, the various lights. There's four of these. One uh, at the front door, one over the driver's compartment, one in the middle of the bus, and uh, one back in the master bedroom. And you can actuate all the lights down the hallway and the lights around the side from this panel. Uh, it's very nice at night when you walk in the bus you can illuminate the whole thing so you don't have any surprises. Um, let's see. Mika, oops. Sorry about that lap dissolve. We got a little bit uh, pushed the wrong button. Uh, going toward the back, we have a stereo system and there's uh, two air conditioners, one for the lower deck and one for the upper deck. And looking straight back, I hope the focus, let's see, we'll zoom out here. Hope the focus is okay. Uh, got the three stairs going up. The bus has still got the over the road air conditioning in it, as well as uh, two 12,000 BTU uh, air conditioners when you're parked. We've got a couple of captain's chairs here, which I think I'll be able to give you a much better view of the living room, as it were, um, from up above. So moving back here, we go back up the stairs. First, let me give you a shot of this. Well, we'll do it upstairs, I guess. Go up the stairs into the kitchen area. So you can see back down the hallway, there's the uh, two compartments, one on each side, and the uh, master bedroom in the back. Now, the intriguing thing about a scenic cruiser is uh, the double deck and the windshield out the front up above where uh, you can really have a view of everything that's going on. So we've got a love seat here and I don't know what Jim is doing. Sounds like he's dismantling it. We've got a seat here. The whole idea of this seat was for the kids to sit up here and there's a CB outlet right there so they could sit and look out and uh, as they're traveling down the road and talk to their friendly truck drivers and what other imbeciles that talk on CBs. This is a control panel. Again we've got switches here that control the pump, uh, that can, the water pump and the, uh, the lights. This is a panel that tells us the condition of our batteries and uh, the condition of our storage tanks. We've got a uh, hundred, let's see, we got hundred gallons of fresh water and uh, appropriate holding tanks. That's the gas gauge. I don't know if you can get a good shot of that. That's a gas gauge of the uh, auxiliary generator, which is a six and a half kW um, Onan, uh, but it's gas instead of diesel. So uh, we have our own separate gas tank for that. Right in that closet there is a washer and dryer. Uh, and in this closet here is, there's a closet right here that's just storage. The whole bus is um, made out of Formica with uh, walnut trim. For instance, that little piece you're looking at right there, that's all one piece of walnut that had to be bandsawed out and fitted into that curve. Uh, and that was a matter of uh, about a day's work. Um, this little jewel right here, again, was a nice little fitting job. And nothing in this bus, there are no straight lines other than the ones we put in. All the walls appear to be straight, but they're curved. So figuring out how to <clears throat> fit those, all these pieces in and the panels was a bit of a challenge. However, it was also a lot of fun. Let's take a look down here the living room. There's a hose for the vacuum there, but overlooking that it was quite a comfortable living room. We'll get down here and you get a better shot. 
looking out the driver's window. Then that sofa turned into a, uh, a bed for two people. The whole thing is carpeted except here for the kitchen area. Um, so you go back here, we, <clears throat> the windows, uh, so you could cook a nice meal and either rolling down the highway or um, stationary, you got a nice view of everything, particularly all the gawkers coming over to look at the bus. You got a propane stove, propane oven, and there's a trash compactor right there, and um, a refrigerator, an electric refrigerator, a microwave, electric refrigerator, and a freezer. So that runs off the battery all the time, which uh, means uh, it's a lot easier to keep it running. All these quarter rounds here, see this rather large quarter round that forming every corner. That was a bit of a trick. Almost cost me my life because the blade from the shaper came out and uh, it must have weighed about oh, two ounces of cold hardened steel and it came flying out and fortunately I had the sense to stand behind the machine and the blade went flying out and went through the walls and bounced around the, band, the garage for a while. Very unpleasant experience. This is a uh, thermostat that controls the upstairs um, heating and air conditioning. And here we've got a uh, dining area for four people. Uh, the drapes all closed, the entire bus all closed all the drapes. One of the big problems I had was never able to quite figure out how to put screens on it. Um, still don't have a figure that out. On the left we've got um, just a minute and tail up the cord here. Time out while we fix the cord. Okay, we're back in business again. I think I'll get rid of the lap dissolve feature. I can figure out how. Okay, I got rid of that little feature. <coughs> now moving right along, we go on back. And uh, Here's the berth. One side is Martha's and the other side is face. Dragging all this wire is a real challenge. So then the bedspread's all made and the, there's a pad so they could sit in there and read. And then they had cupboards up here that they could store stuff in. And then there were drawers down there that they could store more stuff in. And face side is, oh actually this is Martha's side on the right and the reason you know that is because I bought these lights and I hope you can see. And so I gave Martha hers and said okay Martha you install yours and I gave Faith hers and I said okay Faith you install yours. So there's Martha's and we haven't quite found Faith. We know where Faith is, it's still in the drawer uninstalled. However, that's how we can tell them apart. Now going back here, more cord problems. Okay, we're back in business again. So going back here to the master bedroom, first we had these doors which were a bit of a trick to make and uh, get some idea what those look like. Getting everything to fit in this thing was a real chore. We bought the bus and think about, started planning it in late 1976 and my recollection is took delivery in May of 77 and I had the uh, rebuilt engine built put in that I bought from uh, our, <clears throat> the Greyhound dealer and then uh, had an automatic transmission put in and had the whole thing all cleaned up and new uh, hoses and belts and just had the whole engine completely taken out Transmission, a new drive shaft, brand new Michelin tires, uh, 
completely had the running gear gone through, the brakes redone, and from there, let's see, brought it home in about September, and we started taking it apart. All the seats, I sold all the seats to the, to the dealer, and then uh, we just started working at it in about October of 77 to uh, get it done in about a year and a half and then take a trip, about a 12,000 mile trip around the country with the kids, Deed and I and Faith and Martha. Well, uh, I misjudged finishing this thing by about a year and uh, so we kind of, uh, we never did make the trip. I guess about all we ever did with it was going out of Tijuana and uh, go out to the Salton Sea. And we went someplace with the McGregors out to uh, Perego Springs. A few other short trips. Loaned it to Lockie one time, and he took it out. I don't mean Lockie, I mean uh, Uwe, our neighbor, Pollen, and they took it up uh, to Hearst Castle. But basically, it's pretty much just sat in here and stored. So today we're parting with it. Well, I think we got a pretty good shot of the inside. Just kind of walk up front. Oh, I'll get you a shot of the bathroom here. Never did quite complete the shower stall. It's a sink and the uh, curtain, a whole bit. Um, interesting problem with this floor. This was a raised floor on both sides, as you probably noticed. We had to lower it here uh, for the kitchen. And here's the bathroom, toilet. And I'll give you some flavor of the electrical. That's the low voltage electrical system. This is the high voltage circuit breaker. The whole bus was built to code. Uh, all this low voltage, you push one of those buttons to actuate the uh, uh, relay, which that relay, which in turn actuates that relay, which handles, this handles a low voltage here, and that's a step switch, so you click it once, it's on, click it again, it's off, and this, that actuates the power to that relay, which in turn then actuates the power to the uh, to the light itself, because when you go to low voltage, this is all 12 volt, and of course 110 volt here. This is all low voltage, so 12 volts, 12 volt bulb uh, takes an awful lot of amperage to run. Here's the back side. Here's the breakfast table again. Another shot of the kitchen. The microwave. Bus rolls right down the highway. There's a 40,000 BTU uh, furnace right under there, and underneath that are the two air conditioners for the uh, outside. There's another shot of the kitchen. Okay, well, I think we've seen enough of the inside, so we'll just head on out and uh, take the bus outside and show you what it looks like outside.